Hi folks, Glenn here and I've got a really, really quick tutorial for you just to show you one of the ways that I go about making extractions or cutouts. And what I mean by that is how I actually remove somebody off the background they were originally photographed against to then put them into a different background. Now in Photoshop we've got a thing called Refine Edge and it's absolutely superb. But when it first came out I was getting so frustrated because I couldn't seem to get the results that everybody was talking about. If let's say I was trying to get this guy here that we've got in front of us, uh, model Sean, extracted off the background, I used to find that I'd get a great selection of the body, but when it came to actually picking up those little extra fine hairs on his head, when I used Refinish to do that, it would affect the selection I'd already made of his body. So what I started to do was this technique because it gives me the best of both worlds. I can get a great selection of the body, a great selection of the head and the hair and combine the two together. So kind of like a win-win situation. And that's what I want to show you today. So here's how I do it. Well, first of all, this one couldn't be any easier, certainly to extract the body because the contrast we've got between what Sean's wearing and the background couldn't be much better. So Photoshop's going to find that really, really easily, easy even. So I'll get my quick selection tool and I'll make a very, very quick selection, full enough, of Sean's body. Now, I'm only going to go up to like his shoulder line and just a little bit of his head here, just his face. I'm not really bothered about how much of his face I include. I'm only really that fussed about his body. So then we'll just zoom in here and I'll remove this little area within there. That's that done. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's you know a very, very quick and easy one to select when it comes to the body. But when I've got the selection made, at this stage I'll go Select and Save Selection. And I'll call that Body and click OK. And then deselect it. Now the next thing I want to do is select his head. So again, I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool. So I'll make a quick drag around inside his head there. But one thing I always make sure is, now with Sean here, we can see there's where his hair comes across here, we can see the background in between some of the strands of his hair. Now I don't want to include that because we can pick it up later on. So let's just hold down my Option key or my Alt key, just drag and remove the selection so it doesn't include any of the hair there where we've got the background showing through. And I'll just hold my space bar down now and I'll move around the head just to see if there's anywhere else where I can see the background background even, coming through his hair. Now just a little bit on this side as well. So again, hold down my Option key or my Alt key, click and drag just to remove it so the selection doesn't include that background. Something like that will be fine. Now when at that stage, I'll then go into Refine Edge, and obviously here we can choose what kind of background or overlay we want to see when we're doing the selection. I'm just going to choose white because I know that the background I'm putting Sean against is quite a bright sky, so having him on white here will kind of represent that really well so I can see what the hair selection will end up looking like. Now when I come into Refine Edge, I don't automatically start moving all the sliders all around the place. I'll just take it nice and steady, and the first one I always go to is the Radius slider here. And I'll just drag it a little bit at a time just to see how much Refine Edge starts to pick up all those fine hairs. And you don't have to move it that far until you start to see that Photoshop's doing a pretty good job of picking up all those fine hairs. Now the trouble with this is you can go too far. Let's say if I bring it right over. See how I get all this like milky kind of ghosting effect here? That's obviously too far, so I'll just back it off until that kind of look there disappears. So maybe around about, let's just drag it up just a little bit more. Probably about there's fine. We're about 15.9, 16, something like that's fine. Then what I'll do is I'll click on the smart radius there just to see if that makes any impact as well, if it does help us out, because sometimes it doesn't. So don't automatically click on it. But there's without it and there's with it. So yeah, it definitely does help us out with this particular selection. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll tend to use this edge detection brush and I'll just go around the outside of his head, not completely over all of the hair there. I'll just do it so that the brush is just touching the edges of the hair that I've already picked up. And I'll just make a quick sweep around his head, like so, just to see what else it can pick up. And there's quite a lot of stray hairs that it is managing to pick up and then let go. And you can see if I put it onto the setup of black and white here, we can see all these extra fine hairs that Refine Edge has really picked up for us, saving us a lot of time and effort. It's great. I love it. So once we've done that, we've got the output bit at the bottom where it says output to. I generally choose selection. Okay, that's personal choice because I'll click on OK now. I get the marching ants and just as like a safety thing because before when I've spent ages making a selection, I've knocked the keyboard a couple of times and I've lost what I've just done. So this is more like a, 
a kind of like once bitten twice shy for me, I'll always, always save them as selection. So select, save selection, and I'll call that one head. And we'll click OK, and then deselect it. So now that I've been able to make two good selections, one of the body, one of the hair, I now need to combine them. So we'll head on over to the channels, and we can see this is the selections that we made. They're saved as alpha channels, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is combine these two together to make one complete cutout. So what I shall do is I won't use the ones I've made because just in case I make a mistake, I'll say I'll click on the body one, click on the thumbnail, drag it down to create a new channel where it says body copy. Let's just double click on there and I'll call that complete because this is gonna be the complete cutout. Now that I'm using this channel here, you can see that it's blue, so I'm actually on that channel. I'll hold down my command key, my control key, and I'll just click on the thumbnail of the head channel there to load in the selection. We can see the marching ants now. And I shall then go edit, fill, and just fill that with white so that it now becomes one complete cutout. So let's just go back to the layers now. So now let's put Sean onto this background here, which is like a running track that I made up for a few images. And what I shall do is I shall go to select and now load in that complete selection. We get this dialog box comes up here. Click on the channel and we can see that we've got body, head, and complete. Those are the two extractions that we made originally, and that's the complete one that we've just combined the two together. So click on complete, click OK, and we get the marching ants going all around them. To then put Sean into that new background, I'll just add a layer mask so that he's kind of like virtually extracted now for that background. It's still there, but it's hidden behind the layer mask like so. And that's really handy in case there's areas that I missed later, I can then paint them in using a brush. So now that we've kind of added that layer mask and we've got this virtual cutout, I'll get my move tool, click and drag him over into that new background. Now, if I just come up to here, you can see there's just a little bit here that I missed with the original cutout. And this is why I said it's great to use a layer mask. So let's just click on the layer mask. I'll get a brush, make sure I'm painting in white, and I'll just paint that in there just to add to that selection. If I'd have just cut him out straight off the background without using a layer mask, I wouldn't be able to do this. So using a layer mask gives you a lot more flexibility. Now, it's just a couple of things we can do now, a couple of extra little tips and tricks to show you how we can make this cutout just a little bit better. And the first one was one that I kind of like stumbled across by mistake. If we look at his hair here, Refine Edge managed to pick up a lot of those extra fine hairs. But one thing I found was, where we've got the, the layer containing Sean, where it says background, which is obviously what he was originally on, to the right of the word background, if I double click and I bring up the layer style dialog box, we've got all these options in here, which generally we tend to think we only use for things like text when we're creating special effects and all that kind of stuff. Oh, we've got an alarm going off, let's just close that. Um, one thing I did, I started playing in here and I just clicked on inner shadow. And you see, when I do that, if I turn it on and off, how much more hair it's actually picking up that wasn't originally selected. Now, when we're in the inner shadow, we've got this angle here this angled disc. Now it's got like a little slide on it. Now if we put that going vertical, that basically means is the direction of the light is coming straight down from the top. So it's gonna catch hair either side of Sean's head evenly. And that's exactly what we want. So that's looking pretty good. And to make this just one little thing better, where it says multiply, and we've got this little color picker here. If I click on that, and then I can just use the teat pipette here just to sample some of his hair color, the shadows actually being created is in Sean's original hair color. So it kind of adds to the effect. So it kind of creates, it makes it look as if he really has picked up extra hair. Now, here's one thing that we need to sort out when we use that little trick. You see, probably see that we can pick up all the hair, but you'll also see that that effect is being applied to Sean's body as well. That inner shadow is being applied to Sean's body. So we need to get it so it's only on Sean's hair. To do that, come over to where it says effects or in a shadow in your layers panel and just right click to bring up this dialog box. And at the bottom, virtually all the way down to the bottom, it says create layer. And we click on that. What it does, it puts that effect, that drop shadow, that inner shadow even, onto its own layer. So now because it's on its own layer, we can then apply a black layer mask to remove the entire effect. Get a white brush and we'll just make it just a little bit bigger, make it nice and soft and then just paint in where we want that effect to be. So now that inner shadow is only on his hair. 
So that's one little extra tip. And the last one I'll do is, you see how sometimes when you do a cutout, you get this kind of gray outline or a little bit of the background still showing on your subject? What I used to do to get rid of that was I'd really painstakingly paint around him to remove it, but you don't have to do that. There's one really, really quick way we can do it. Let's just click back on the layer containing Sean. And in fact, we'll click on the layer mask that contains the cutout. First thing we'll do is we'll go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And we'll just add a very, very small radius here. Something like two pixels is perfectly fine. And click OK. The next thing we'll do is I'll get my uh, lasso tool and I'll make a very rough selection around Sean just to include the body. I won't include the hair. I'll just include the body, like so. And then let's just find an area where we've got this outline, this kind of like haloing still effect still coming around Sean. To get rid of that, all I need to do is go to uh, Image, Adjustments, and I'll use Levels to bring up the Levels dialog box. And then when we've got the black slider on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on it and drag it in. And as I drag it in, you'll notice that that haloing or that kind of like surround tends to disappear as quickly and as easily as that and click OK. So now let's zoom out to full screen, select and deselect. So that's just three ways that we can improve our selections. That I generally tend to use, so certainly in pictures where we've got people with lots of fine hairs. I've shown you how to do the cutout, how to use a little layer style uh, trick there to pick up more of the hairs and one way to get rid of that surround. Okay, so shameless plug alert now, but I actually do workshops that are all about how we can get the very, very best selections in Photoshop. And if you head on over to my website, glyndewis.com, where it says workshops, you'll see one called Photoshop Know-How Selections. And that's a four hour workshop that we're doing to show you how you can use all the tools within Photoshop to get the very, very best selections. So check that there regularly for the dates and price offers and all that kind of stuff. But for now, that's everything I've got to show you. I'll see you next time.